Thomas M. Dyke has retired, and I'm happy to have you with us for another chapter of the Silent Service. This is a true story of what was actually and literally the biggest target in the world. It is the story of the USS Archerfish, her officers and men, and as a vital part, it is the story of her skipper, Lieutenant Commander Joseph F. Enright. It begins aboard another submarine, the Dace. Lieutenant Commander Enright had been her captain since she was commissioned. Late in October 1943, Dace was at Pearl Harbor, waiting only for our captain to come aboard with final orders before shoving off on patrol. Here comes the skipper. Now we'll get to work. What we draw, Captain? Well, the Admiral handed us a nice juicy plum. Dace goes on combat patrol, south of Honshu, with special attention given the shipping lanes off Cayusha and the Takara Gunto Group. Why, it'll be like shooting fish in a barrel. I hope so. But don't forget, these fish can shoot back. But they sort of have good hunting. Every sub patrol in that area sunk plenty of Japanese shipping. All right, boys, let's get on the way. So Dace and her crew left Pearl with high hopes, and a month later found her patrolling her assigned area south of Honshu. Her hopes were still high, but her score? A large goose egg. Zero. She hadn't fired a single one of her torpedoes. Great honor, Captain. Getting that ship launcher all the time. Still bearing zero, eight, zero. Steady as you go. Looks like we'll have no trouble intercepting her own three engines. She holds her present course, she ought to fall right in our laps. Range, 35,000 yards. I'm going below, Steve. Maybe full extension of the scope will pick her up. You take the con. Aye, sir. Here's hoping today's the day. Of this fellow spotting us like the one who got away yesterday. Take her down! Up, Scope. again, away from us. He's altering his course every five minutes exactly. Well, his next thing ought to be toward us in exactly five minutes. That's what I'm figuring. Ready all tubes, stand by forward. Set all torpedoes depth 20 feet, speed high. Use a target length of 600 feet in calculating the spread. Aye, aye, sir. Get that can of paint ready, Chief. You'll be putting your silhouette on our conning tower before chow call. Aye, aye, sir. Catch him, Captain. It's not a prayer, Steve. He's making better in 22 knots. Down scope. That's the fourth target we've lost at the last minute. Tough luck, all right, sir, but 
We'll get a break soon. I hope so. Okay, secure from battle stations. Secure from battle stations. Secure from battle stations. <laughs> Trigger say six enemy ships, including that carrier in this area. We've been out on patrol over a month now, and the only four ships we've sighted all got away from us. Maybe Trigger scared the rest of the enemy off. When they have shifted their main route south? Well, that's what I've been thinking. We haven't picked up so much as a single radar pip in the past week in this whole area around the Mommy Gun Town. Well, where do you figure we're looking, Captain? Well, I've been trying to think what the enemy would do. And it's my guess they must be coming down inside from Nagasaki. We'll take station west of Koshiki Reddo, and if my hunch is right, we ought to find plenty of targets. Tell the OD to change course to 345 and increase speed to standard. Aye, sir. Acting on his hunch, Captain Enright headed the days towards what he hoped would be more productive hunting grounds. I'm sub packed to old submarines. Trigger trailing very large convoys, six troop carriers, two tankers, and heavy escort. Position 29 north, 135 east, course 155. 29 north, 135 east, 29 north, 135 east. 250 miles from us. Just off a mommy gun tow. That's right. A mommy gun tow where we patrolled all last week. Two months after she had left Pearl Harbor on a maiden patrol, Dace approached Midway Island. Dace yet had to be tested in combat, and Joe Enright wasted no time in seeing Captain Leo Pace, his squadron commander. I don't mind telling you this surprised me a great deal. Joe, what on earth made you have to be relieved of your command? You've got Dace's patrol report there, haven't you, sir? Of course. Forty days on combat patrol, six Japanese ships sighted, not a single torpedo fired, returned to Midway with our tubes full. That's the answer, Captain. Not to me, it isn't. Any submariner can have a dry run once in a while. I've heard of a few of them. Haven't you ever heard of good luck and bad? It can be luck once, or twice, or three times, Captain. I know your record, Joe. I've seen your file. Every officer you've ever served under has given you absolute top marks. Now, I'm not going to embarrass you by quoting what they've said, but you know they don't do any snow jobs on those fitness reports. Are you trying to tell me they don't know what they're talking about? Those were peacetime reports, sir. Maybe I was hot stuff then, but that doesn't prove that I've got what it takes to be a good combat officer. Doping out the enemy's strategy. I'm guessing. That's the skipper's job. That's where I goofed every time. Believe me, Captain, this is no snap decision. I've had plenty of chances to think it out. Dace can't help win the war under a skipper who guesses wrong 100% of the time. Give her a captain who will put a fine ship and a great crew where there'll be some use. I'm sorry, sir, but my request for other duty still stands. All right, Joe. The Claggett's awaiting assignment. He'll relieve you at once as captain of Dace so there'll be no time lost. Mike's a swell guy and a fine officer. Base couldn't ask for a better skipper. Oh, and the base commander told me if I fail to change your mind, he wants you to serve here as his executive officer. All clear? Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. There was enough work on Midway in which Commander Enright could lose himself. There was always enough work. Never enough men, but it wasn't the kind of work a veteran submariner like Joe Enright could enjoy. Even Midway's famous Goonie Birds couldn't make him forget where he really belonged, on the bridge of a submarine. Hi, Dan. Hey, good to see you. Sit down. When did you get in? Oh, we just left in on two engines this morning. I've been crying on the CEO's shoulder, telling him all the things we need. He just tossed me over to you. Well, service is our motto. What can I do for you? Well, I'd uh, like about two months leave back home. Uh, failing that, uh, a couple of blondes, about six cases of Kentucky moonshine. You've been drinking the alcohol, those torpedoes again. Now, what do you really want? 
You know, I had a hunch I'd get no cooperation from you. Well, it's all here. Two of the diesels are shot. Three of our gyro repeaters have been out for two weeks. And the radar makes all sorts of pretty pictures that aren't there. Oh, well, we ought to be able to refit you and have you out in the routine time. How was the patrol? Not bad. Not bad at all, if I say so myself. Our combat report even made Captain Pace whistle a little. We got six freighters. Total tonnage, about 75,000. And two escorts tried to depth charge us and happened to overlook our torpedoes. One of them was a destroyer, a Sashio class. And a nice, fat aircraft carrier we left to fire and sinking by the stern. Wow. No wonder the old Pace whistled. And to think how close you came to bilging out at the academy. Oh, no, that was books. This is real. Now, that paperwork always tossed me for a loss. But you really seem to take to it, Joe. How long have you been exec here? Oh, about six months now. Well, that must be a pleasant change. No death charges dropping on your noggin. Oh, it sure is, Dad. Well, I'll see at the office club tonight. Good, I'll be looking for you. Have dinner with me. Sam Dealey is coming in, and we'll try to get together with him. Good. See you then. Oh, good to see you again. Knew you were coming in this morning. I wanted to welcome you to Midway in person. Well, I heard you were exec here now. Been a long time between drinks, Joe. Sure has. I don't have to ask you if you had a good patrol. <laughs> we were shot with luck this time out. The Japanese couldn't have been more cooperative if they had uh, invited us. Yeah. I can imagine they tried to help you. Well, I'd like to hear all about it. How about a cup of coffee at the club? As soon as I have my session with Captain Pace. I'll meet you at the club in an hour or so. Right. You listen to me. You think you're the only skipper that's had a run of hard luck? Oh, I don't believe in luck. Joe, you know you're as good a skipper as I am any day in the week. You've served under plenty of the same officers. And your fitness reports are better than mine, if anything. Oh, Sam, fitness reports don't mean everything. <laughs> right. But Dace and Harder were alongside each other in Australia two months ago. I talked to some of your old crew. From your exec on down, they swear by you. Sam, you sure you're not just giving me a fight talk? On my word, Joe. Everything I've told you is the truth. Don't you think you ought to reconsider? Oh, Why, hello, Sam. I didn't know you were in. Hello, Pete. How are you? Good to see you. How have you been? Fine. Sit down. Hello, Joe. Hi. Yeah, I've got a few minutes before I can see the CO with this stuff. Say, you uh, you better hurry up and refit, Sam, and get back to sea. Uh -huh. Some lucky submariner is going to get a chance at the biggest target in the world, according to our intelligence. What do you mean? Well, Air Recon just brought back some photos of Shinono on the ways in the Tokyo Navy Yard. What's Shinono? Super battleship. They've been converting it into the largest aircraft carrier ever built. Intelligence estimates her at between 60 and 70,000 tons. 60,000 tons? I that's three times as big as the Oklahoma. The Air Force has been trying to get a shot at her in their Tokyo array. Well, that's why we think the Japanese will try and move her to a safer spot as soon as she's ready to put to sea. Now, from the photo, it looks as if they might make the attempt within the next few months. Man, I give my right arm for a shot at that. Well, I gotta get going. I'll, uh, I'll see you tonight, huh? Yeah. Say, so how about a drink at the club? Fine, see you about eight. Right. So long, Joe. And so long, Pete. 60,000 tons. Playing poker tonight with us? Yeah, sure. First, I think I'll have a little talk with Leo Pace. At dawn of 31 October 1944, USS Archer Pace sailed from Midway. A primary mission was lifeguard duty in the waters south of Tokyo Bay to rescue B-29 crews that might have to ditch after their raids on Japan. Just assigned as Archer Fish's new skipper, Lieutenant Commander Joseph F. Enright. I've been meaning to ask you, Bob Zinsky. Uh, by the way, am I pronouncing that right? Just call me Bob, sir. Everybody else does. Okay, Bob then. Just what kind of a fish is an Archer Fish? I thought I knew them all, but that's a new one on me. It's a small fish, Captain, and it spits water at insects on branches. So when they're knocked off into the water, the archer fish can eat them. You're joking. No, on the level. Hey, take a look at that. One of our boys in the torpedo room drew it. Well, let's hope our archer fish can shoot a stream just as straight when the time comes. Oh, hello, Jack. 
I just finished opening my last mail from home, Captain. I've got a problem. Yeah. Any chance of our being in San Francisco two weeks from now? San Francisco? We ought to be on station south of Tokyo Bay, unless something goes mighty wrong. And I'm sure going to be in trouble. Jack Boone, 622 Lamont Street, San Francisco. You are hereby ordered to report on or before November 14th to draft board number 237, San Francisco. Oh, no. What are you laughing about? You think I want to be called a draft dodger? Answer from Guam to your message, sir. Good. No air raid schedule. Archer Fisher's released for 48 hours to see what we can find. Well, that's a real break. 29 days of doing nothing but twiddle our thumbs about got me down. We'll take a look around eastward past Nampo Shoto. Come to course 035 and keep two engines on battery charge. Course 035, two engines on battery charge. Aye, aye, sir. Radar is acting up again, sir. Request permission to put it out of commission to attempt repairs. How long will it take, Jack? Oh, I think about a couple of hours. Well, go ahead, get on it. A radar unusable, Archerfish stumbled blindly through the night for almost two hours. How are you coming? We've got a target, bearing 028 True, range about 12 miles. You better fiddle with your radar some more, Jack. That's an island we've got in view from here, and your bearing's off about 20 degrees. Give me the bearing on that target again. Target now bearing 027 True, range just over 10 miles. An island, huh? That's the only island I ever heard of that moves that fast. All engines are head full. Come to course 160. Battle stations. Battle stations. This was the moment every submarine skipper lives for. A target in sight, a smart ship, a full load of torpedoes. Range is staying the same, sir, or a little greater. She's on an almost parallel course, making more speed than we are. Engine room, cousins. What are we pulling, Ron? 95% of full load, Captain. We're only making 18 knots. We've got to have more speed. Boost them up to the full rated load. Aye, aye, sir. Any change in the target space course, Bob? No, sir. Still 195. Target speed? It's a shade on the 20. Engine room, cousins. Ronald, throw away the rule book. Give me everything the engines have got. Making 19 and 3 quarter knots. That's a full knot over our previous best. Let's pray everything holds together. Tom, tell your boys they're doing great. Is anybody aboard with better night vision than Andrews? No, sir. He's tops. What do you make her, John? It's too big for a tanker, sir. She's a carrier. You sure? I'm positive, sir. Gordon, come up here. Send this message urgent. From Archer Fish to Com Sub Pack and all submarines in Empire areas. And pursuing large aircraft carriers. Ah, she's a carrier, all right. Hey, you think it might be the Shinono? No, you're kidding, aren't you? Four destroyers. Position. From Admiral Lockwood at Pearl Archer Fish. Keep after him, Joe. Your picture is on the piano. <laughs> Archer Fish kept after him. Here was one target that wouldn't get away. Not if this crew could help it. Any change, Andy? Yes, sir. Two of the destroyer escorts just turned on red lights at their trucks, sir. Signal of some sort. Could mean they spotted us. Get the topside watch below. Stand by to take her down in a hurry. Captain, they haven't seen us yet, and they won't, I'm sure of it. What makes you so certain? They just won't. Oh, 
I hope your faith is justified. Well, you've outsmarted them so far, sir. I wouldn't have believed it possible to hold a target moving it out faster than we are if I hadn't seen it myself. They just don't cross us by changing their base course. Yes, sir. What time is it, sir? I've lost all track. Almost midnight. Captain, I think they've changed course toward us. Range closing rapidly. Hold present course. If target closes to within 12,000 yards, we'll dive for periscope approach. What's the time? Exactly all 300, sir. We've done it, sir. Five hours. Now we'll get a shot at her at last. Range, 12,000. Speed, 20. Still closing. Left full rudder. Head straight for the target. Left full rudder. Head straight for the target. Stay on course toward the target. Take her down! <laughs> to you, Mr. Gordon E. Crosby, Jr., Seattle, Washington, who was a communications officer of the Archer Fish during this history-making attack. Glad to have you aboard, Mr. Crosby. I'm happy to be aboard, Admiral, and I certainly enjoyed your reenactment of the night Archer Fish sank the biggest target in the world. Did you know at the time you had gotten the Shinano? We hoped so, but we weren't actually sure what our target had been until after the war. At the time, all we knew was that we'd sunk a tremendously large carrier. I imagine Archerfish took quite a depth charging from the Shinano's destroyer escort. It wasn't too bad. They'd no idea of our exact location, and they gave up pretty soon. I don't mean that we weren't glad to see them go. You were a reserve officer, weren't you? Yes, I was. Well, you're a very fine example of the dedicated officers and men of the Naval Reserve who carried such a heavy load so well and made the efficient expansion of the Navy possible. Congratulations to you, Captain Enright, 
and the fine ship's company of the Archer Fish. Thank you, Admiral. We hope you'll be aboard when we bring you another true story of the silent service. Oh, my God. 